Take away the world's desires when we pray. Holy Spirit, lift us higher when we pray. When we pray. When we pray. Let it not be for a season when we pray. Wisdom and not reason when we pray. Let your name be our petition when we pray. When we pray. When we pray. 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 Lord, show us the way. For wisdom and not reason when you pray, let it name be your petition when you pray. Mm, when you pray, oh, when you pray, 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 God, show us the way, show us. battle-ready prayer. Praises be to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Holy One of Israel, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I give you thanks and praise for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. I give thanks for a mind to pray, a heart to seek your face, and authority to bring my members into subjection. I thank you for this moment and the opportunity that each day brings. I know that each day is special, and I am empowered with unlimited potential. 
There are no ceilings on my life, obstacles that cannot be overcome, or barriers that can stand in my way. In fact, this is the greatest day of my life, and I am free to exercise all of the gifts and talents you have blessed me with. My hopes and dreams can manifest today, and I approach this moment with great expectation for miracles, breakthrough, and deliverance. I stand before you, Lord, naked, offering no excuses or justifications for my shortcomings and weaknesses. I come, Lord, seeking your standard and not those of men. I pray that you will forgive me my sins, known and unknown. Forgive every thought, deed, action, motive, or intent of my heart that is not lined up with your word, your will, or your calling and purpose for my life. Please forgive secret faults and uproot any seed of discontent that has been planted in my life. Forgive me, Lord, if I have held back the tithe, and give me a heart to restore every person that I have wronged. Just as you forgive me, I forgive those that have wronged me, and I let go of any art, bitterness, or ill will that I have held in my heart. I will not allow sin and bitterness to cut off the flow of blessings into my life. I repent right now in the name of Jesus, and I receive the power of the blood to cleanse me from all iniquity. I come before you, Lord, with a heart that is after your own, and a mind that has stayed on you. I thank you, Lord, for saving me from myself and the consequences of sin. I surrender, Lord, and give you total and complete reign over my life. I willingly submit to you in thanksgiving and praise. I thank you, Lord, for the relationship and fellowship that you have allowed me to share with you. I thank you for every moment, prayer, word, and opportunity to gain revelation and understanding concerning you. Forgive me for the times I have taken you for granted or moments where I have allowed my focus and discipline to slip. I choose you, Lord, and all of your benefits and denounce all ties and fellowship with the world. I have no place in the world and denounce everything that it offers. You have given me a choice, Lord, and I choose to be in covenant with you. I have crossed the line of no return, and I will not look back. Each day I am getting more and more like you and growing further and further from this world. My reality in Christ is more real than what my natural eyes behold, and I know that you are not a million miles away. You are right here with me every step of the way. I will have confidence in you, Lord, concerning every situation I face, every decision I make, and every temptation in my path. Give me an ear, Lord, to hear your instruction, eyes that will not be deceived, and a heart that will remain faithful. My life has been built on the foundation that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You died on the cross for my sins, and your blood was shed for me. I exercise total faith and confidence in my belief that death was powerless to hold you in the grave, and that you rose again and resurrected every dead thing. I receive your resurrection power and declare that there is no dead thing in my life. I speak life in all things pertaining to me. Even now, Lord, I pray that you will breathe life into my relationships, my home, my dreams, my career, and my calling and purpose. Let there be no cracks in my foundation and restore every bone that has been broken. I pray, Lord, that dead branches be pruned for me and my harvest bear much fruit. I offer no resistance and pray that all ungodly distractions be pruned for me, whether they are people, unhealthy relationships, environments, dead situations, ungodly influences, or anything that is not expedient for me. I distance myself right now from every dead thing and release them from my life in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that I have inherited life through your sacrifice, forgiveness for my sins through your blood, revelation through your word, and I have been empowered by your spirit. I take precious time, Lord, to fully grasp and consider what my relationship with you means. Help me to never lose sight of the fact that I have an adversary that must be fought each day. My adversary is the world and Satan, who is the prince of this world. The world around me is not my home, and each day it becomes more a reflection of Satan, its prince. I am not ignorant to Satan's devices, and I understand that the world is designed for my destruction. The allurement of pleasure and the temptations that cross my eyes are for the purpose of robbing me of everything I have inherited through Christ. Every trap, every lust, and the pride that is in the world are set against me on all sides. The hope that I have is in patiently walking according to your word and staying firm to the covenant I have made with you. The world cannot strip me of my authority, but I can hand it over. I will not be deceived by what I see, hear, or how I feel. If it is not of God, then it is for my destruction. Help me, Lord, to see the spirit behind the temptation. The word tells me that Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus comes that I might have life and have it more abundantly. I rebuke and bind every influence that seeks to draw me away from you. For it is nothing more than a gateway to hell 
and will rob me of my eternal destiny. Father, I know you are able to do all things, and there is nothing that is impossible for you. Right now, Lord, I remember my first love, and I am prepared today to exercise faith in the light of circumstances. Sacrifice my own wants and desires in order to embrace yours. Stand on the word of God, even if it causes me to be peculiar. Deny my flesh and feelings, regardless of the temptation, and not make decisions based on what I see or think. I will forget about the past and press towards the mark. I will walk as a prophet of God, put my head up, and if nobody is there to encourage me, then I will encourage myself. I will not be ashamed to follow the examples of Christ, even in the face of persecution. To think differently in the light of the negative labels and slander I may endure. Nor will I be afraid to take a stand in the minority, even if it seems as if the whole world is standing against me. I am willing to abstain when others are eager to participate, to speak out when my words may cause me to be ostracized, and to believe the Bible even when it is the unpopular thing to do. In other words, I am prepared to live like Jesus. I release my faith right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever situation I'm in, whatever I'm dealing with, and regardless of what odds are against me, I will be steadfast and unmovable. I am an elite company and encompassed about by a great cloud of witnesses. The words of this prayer will comfort me, build up my spirit, man, and encourage me in the way. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, I rebuke, bind, and cast down Satan and his forces of darkness from any involvement, activity, or distractions in this prayer. I commission my angels to come against every thought, feeling, influence, and hindrance that is set against me. I stand in the gap for my family and friends and pursue the Lord with all of my heart. Even as I hear the words of this prayer, my body is regenerating itself. My body is preparing itself for another productive day. My body is developing according to your plan, and health is being released in all of my organs, tissue, bones, bodily systems, veins, arteries, and muscle. My brain is processing the information consistent with your word and filtering out everything that is not of you. My heart is being protected from all ungodly influences, and my innocence is being guarded. I have and will always have a sound mind that is saturated in your word. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, I rebuke evil spirits from attaching to me in any way, shape, or form. They have no place, familiarity, or invitation in my life. They do not enter into my eyes, my ears, my mind, or my heart. My spirit, man, has victory over them all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, I rebuke, bind, and cast down, and break all generational curses. I decree by the blood of the Lamb and the power given to me as joint heir with Jesus Christ that I will not be the victim of physical, mental, or emotional abuse, nor will I have, serve, or entertain idols or false gods. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, I decree that I am not a covenant breaker, and my yea is yea and my nay is nay. I pray, Lord, that you protect me from all hurt, harm, pain, and danger, and those that mean me ill will. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, I have the patience of Job, the meekness of Moses, the heart of David, the favor of Joseph, the ear of Samuel, the courage of Joshua, the wisdom of Daniel, the zeal of Peter, the love of John, the faithfulness of Abraham, and the boldness of Paul. I abide in the fruits of the Spirit all the days of my life, and even now these fruits are growing in me. Lord, help me to be a person of great faith, consistent in good deeds, and a constant encourager. I will continue to love you with all of my heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit, and to love my neighbor as myself. In the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, I pray, Lord, that you are first in everything that I do, and I have no priority greater than you all the days of my life. I am eternally connected to you and have an expectation in heaven. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, I pray that my face be before the Lord always and that your angels encamp around me and deliver me. Order my steps in the word and design my days according to your will. The Lord touches my mouth and puts his words in it. Lord, I will go wherever you send me and speak whatever you give me to speak. I am not afraid of their faces because your sword protects me at all times. Father, you are my sustainer, my provider, my comforter, my guide, my strength, and most of all, my friend. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, I equip myself right now with the whole armor of God that I am covered from head to toe in every aspect of my life. There should be no parts of my life that are exposed on the inside or out, but all should be covered by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, I put on the helmet of salvation. I have been redeemed from all traces of poverty, and I rebuke and bind a poverty spirit. You supply all of my needs, and I am blessed all the days of my life. 
In the name of Jesus, I speak abundant harvest in my life. My bank accounts are overflowing and my barns are full. The blessings of the Lord overtake and pursue me all the days of my life. I speak financial security and wholeness over my family and the perfect will of God in my life. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, I rebuke, bind, and curse the spirit of death. I shall not see untimely death, nor shall death have any hold over me. I shall fulfill all of my days, months, hours, years, minutes, and seconds. I have divine order in my life, and death has no grip on me. A thousand shall fall by my side, and ten thousand by my right hand, but it shall not come nigh me. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, my feet are shod with the gospel of peace. Peace rests upon me and covers my mind and heart. I have peace in the midst of storms, chaos, and confusion. Your peace comforts me in times of trial and sustains me from being weary. It surpasses all understanding, rendering logic helpless, and my faith sustains me. Father, you are an awesome God. You are not a million miles away, but right here with me each and every day. You walk with me, talk with me, and guide me every step of the way. You love me, and I rest in you, and I know that you are my God. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, I have been empowered with the sword of the spirit, and I have authority over all power of Satan. I rejoice and celebrate that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. The sword of the Lord shall never depart from me, and I speak boldness into my spirit. I rebuke, bind, and cast down the spirit of fear. You have not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. When I walk through the waters, you are with me. When I go through the rivers, you help me. And when I pass through the fire, the flame does not kindle upon me. You have sent your love upon me, and you protect me all the days of my life. The hands of protection rest on me, and your fire shall be in my spirit. In the name of Jesus and the power of his blood, the shield of faith is an extension of my arm. My faith shall not fail me, and I trust in the Lord with all of my heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit. If you said it, then I know that you will do it. You shall not withhold any good thing from me and you are able to perform your word in my life. I fortify my faith by releasing the promises of God into my life. Every word you have spoken concerning my destiny shall be established and come to pass, and my enemies shall not prevail against me. In the name of Jesus, I pray over my marriage. I pray that my marriage will continue to be everything that the word of God called it to be. My marriage shall be built on faithfulness, trust, loyalty, and a mutual love of God. You shall be the head of my house at the center of everything we do. And the word of God shall be the binding and final authority in all matters. I am God's ambassador in my house, and I shall cover my spouse all the days of my life through my word, examples, character, and deeds. My marriage is blessed and washed in the blood and shall weather any challenges that arise against it. Our love continues to grow stronger each day as the Lord allows us to see more of him in one another. If I am single, then I confess total contentment within myself, wholeness in my life, patience to wait on God and security in Christ. I am a person of high self-esteem and significant value to the kingdom. I will not compromise my covenant with God, nor will I allow fear to cause me to operate in the fleshly realm. I exercise complete and total control over my mind, my will, and my emotions, and I do not leave any doors open for Satan to sneak in. I understand that every relationship is not for me. Every person does not have my best interests. All that glitters isn't gold, and every sugary thing is not sweet. In the name of Jesus, I will not be distracted by counterfeits and wolves in sheep's clothing. I will not lower my biblical expectations, nor will I give in to the pressures of the world. I have total confidence in God and the plan that he has for my life. In the name of Jesus, I surrender my children to you, Lord, and trust you to impart me with the ability and wisdom to raise them in the fear of the Lord. I make a commitment to my children to openly receive the instruction in your word on how to raise them, love them, and properly present them before you at that day. I pray that your calling and purpose will be fulfilled in them and ask that you guide and direct me in all matters concerning them. I shall be careful to represent you before them in everything that I say or do. I commit to live holy before them and set godly examples for them to follow. I shall not be a hypocrite and I shall practice what I preach. I shall be a provider and protector for them and make whatever sacrifices are necessary to ensure them a wonderful life. I shall fight to preserve their innocence and protect them from the brainwashing of the world. My expectation in them shall come to pass and the blessings set out in your words shall be established in them. My children shall see you in everything that I say and do. In the name of Jesus, I seal my soul to the words of this covenant that it is the declaration of my heart that every word be lined up with the perfect will of God 
and line by line with his understanding. Let the Lord Jesus Christ be the final arbitrator of my mind and heart, and that this covenant be in all ways pleasing in the sight of God. I thank you, Lord, that you love me and that you hear me. I thank you, Lord, for a mind to share intimate fellowship with you. I thank you that these words shall be established in my heart and mind, that they shall be a part of me and guide and direct my paths at all times. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity and this second chance. I look forward to your return, and I know that nothing that I have done or sacrifice has been in vain. Thank you for this life, who I am in Christ, and for all blessings you have bestowed upon me. Amen. Amen. We just want to thank you for joining us tonight. You are listening to LPJ 64 on Mr. and Mrs. Sweet Thing Bible Study Hour. Yes, Bible Study Hour. Hope you got your Bibles ready and open and ready to go. It's another night that God has blessed us to uh, get together and study His Word. Uh, uh, all of us at one and just lift him up and praise his name. It's so wonderful to be able to do that. Yes, it is. Uh, there's so many places in the world now that can't not do that. They don't have that right anymore. It's been taken away. But we've been blessed and we just want to praise God for that. And that's right. And we want to lift God up each and every day of our lives. And that's why Monday, Wednesday, and Friday we come to you with Bible study time so that we can learn His Word, we can study His Word, and we can learn from each other. Yes. We can get in and learn from each other, praise Him together, lift Him up together, right. talk to Him together as His children, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. So we want to thank you for coming and joining us once again. And we're going to be talking tonight about character development. Character development. We're going to go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's why character development is going to come from. Jesus Christ. Amen. Comes from Jesus Christ That's himself. Right. That's right. That's where his son character came from. It came from the Father. That's right. It was built from the Father. And that's who he represented when he was sent here to redeem this world. He represented his Father. He told the world. He said, I'm about my Father's business. business. Mm -hmm. He came here to represent his Father. That's right. I'm going to read uh, Philippians 2 5 in the Amplified uh, Version. Let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. Yes. That's right. That's right. So, wise, let Jesus live in you. Let him live his life out in, in you. you. That's what he's saying. Let me live my life out in you, through you. That's, right. That's what Jesus is saying. He wants to be, live his life out in you. Let him live in you, live through you. Amen. See, Christ is longing to manifest himself in his church, which is who? You. Right, you see, people. we have confused ourselves so much that the church, church is that building. How can God live through a piece of wood, a brick, or mortar? That's right. Come on, let's be real. Let's get realistic here. How can God live through wood and mortar? Then you must be the church because he wants to live through you. And see, even the devil can't live in a building. He can't, the devil can't live in anything that doesn't have light. That's it. So let's, let's, let's get real in faith and know who the church is. The church is you and I that right. God we wants are the to church. Right. He can, if the church was wood and brick, why do he say, men, love your wives? And don't love the church. He oh. died for the church, he, which is us. What you died for wood and mortar? Oh, no. No. And he said, not even hell can prevail against his church, which is us, not the building, 
but hell cannot even prevail against it. So it's got to be his church, which is the, uh, the bride. Mm -hmm. uh, That's his bride. Will he be coming back to get wood and mortar and brick? No, he's Come coming on. back to get us with no blemishes or anything, no spots, no wrinkles. I haven't seen any wood or mortar yet that didn't have blemishes and spots, spots and everything else. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. So let's get real, people. Let's think about where the church, we need to clean ourselves up. Amen. So Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. We it's keep saying we want Jesus to come back. Well, let's get ourselves together. Let's get it right. Well, it won't be no spots, no blemishes. Let's get this character right. Let's get this building right so he can come on back and get us. That's right. But the very image of God is to be reproduced in us. <clears throat> so we must be transformed by the grace of God. We are living in a solemn time. An important work is to be done for our own souls and for the souls of others or we should meet with an infinite loss. We must be transformed by the grace of God, or we shall fail of heaven. Let's do this again. We must be transferred by who? The grace of God. By the grace of God. We can't do it ourselves. Anyone is waiting on you to come already ready, right. already holy, mm -hmm. to go to God, you walk away from that person. Don't right. listen to them. Don't pay them attention to them. You just heard the word. The word said we must be transformed by, the, by grace of God. the grace of God. So any church, any any building wants you to come already holy and ready to go, don't go there. Because right. God has to work in you, get you transformed. And get us prepared. We got to remember the reproduction of Christ's character is the goal. The object of the Christian life is fruit bearing, the reproduction of characters, Christ's character in the believer, that it may be reproduced in others. Self denial, self sacrifice, benevolence, kindness, love, patience, fortitude, and Christian trust are the daily fruits borne by those who are truly connected with God. And you can only get those things when God okay. works in you, when God cleans you, when God, God changes you. When you get that connection with God, get that one-on-one -on -one connection with God, He's the only one that can get you in that in that way and changes you when you have those things, those fruits right there. And no one else can do that. Only through Christ Jesus. Only through Christ Jesus. He can get you prepared and ready in that way. He said the acts may not be published to the world, but they themselves are daily wrestling with evil and gaining precious, victorious over temptation and wrong. So every day we are wrestling every day with evil. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I know I am. Yeah, <laughs> I am too. And so don't let say make you feel that you're not worthy. Because it don't look like you moving forward. Don't look like you getting anywhere. Don't look like you're doing anything uh, with your life for Jesus. Because that's the way it looks. But God is working in you. God is changing you little by little. That's right. Piece by piece. Piece God by is, piece. Step yes. by step. He's working you. Satan is out there to make you feel like or you're not doing anything, or God don't love you, or you, he, he, you're not going to make it in, because look at you, you still this, or you still that. You just tell Satan you're alive. God loves me, and he's working on me, and he's changing me little by little. And don't let anyone else tell you different. That's why it requires the testing time to reveal the true goal of love and faith in the character. So when trials and perplexity come upon the church, then the steadfast zeal and warm affections of the Christians are developed. 
So in other words, when we go through the trials and tribulation of this life, it is to develop our character. Yes. So when something happens, don't feel because you've been in church for 20 years, mm. you shouldn't be tested. Why is this happening to me? I've been serving God for 20 years or more. Mm. This shouldn't be happening to me. Who are you? You should be tested because you've been there long enough to be tested. You should have right. that faith. You should have faith enough that when God tests you, you should pass the test with no problem. He tested right. Job. He tested Job. He tested Paul. He tested um, Moses. He tested all of them. So who are you not to be tested? You Amen. should be tested with joy and grace. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for carrying me through this That's test. Right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for building my confidence. Thank you, Lord, for testing me. And we gotta remember that that heavenly character must be acquired on earth. We got we're going to uh, Galatians chapter six. Galatians chapter six, verse seven. Do not be deceived and deluded and misled. God will not allow himself to be sneered at, scorned, dis disdained, or mocked by mere pretensions or profession, or by his precepts being set aside. He inevitably delude himself who attempts to delude God. For whatever a man sows, that and that only is what he will reap. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So some, sometimes we need to think mm -hmm. it's not always God letting bad things happen to because us. Because what we saw. Sometimes you need to get in the mirror and think about years ago, what did you sow mm -hmm. that you are reaping today? You're going to read verse 8 too. Okay. <clears throat> For he who sows to his own flesh, lower nature, sensuality, will from the flesh reap decay and ruin and destruction. But he who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Amen. So think about that. Like I said, you need to look deep in yourself yes, and Lord. see what did you sow and who did you sow to. Because so you sow, so you reap. So maybe you're reaping something that you sowed a few years back that now you're reaping it. Yeah, maybe you have turned your life around. Well, maybe, still about to, the consequences yes, still come. Maybe you have changed your life. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are a Christian now, but you still have to reap what you sow. Now, that's where your faith come in, that God will give you the strength to be able to bear what you sow, be able to handle what you reap. Amen. That's where your faith come in, and, and, and know that God's going to be with you. God's going to walk this and battle sure with will. you. Mm -hmm. Not get upset and say, oh, well, I don't, I, I don't know why God let this happen to me. I've been a deacon in the church for the last eight years. But you forgot what you did but ten you, years ago. <laughs> you, you forgot what you did before you became a deacon. Yeah. You yeah. forgot what you did before you became a mother of the church. Or pastor. Or pastor. Or just became a member of the church. Or just became a member of the church. You forgot that. Well, God had me. So, remember, that's going to help build your character. That's right. You got to remember, nothing but holiness will prepare you for heaven. It is sincere, experimental piety alone that can give you a pure, elevated character and enable you to enter into the presence of God who dwelleth in light unapproachable. The heavenly character must be acquired on earth or it can never be acquired at all. Oh, amen, Ooh. amen. Do you understand what that's saying? Mm -hmm. Got to be acquired while we're living. While we're earth. living. While we're walking this earth. It's got to be done right here, right now. That's right. He said, flatter not yourself that a time will come when you can make an earnest effort easier than now. Every day increases your distance from God. 
prepare for eternity with such zeal as you have not yet manifested. Educate your mind to the love of the Bible, to the love, the prayer meeting, to love the hour of meditation, and above all, the hour when the soul communes with God. Amen. To love all that Bible study, meditation, and the time that you are communing with God is something that we need each and, each and every day. And we need to do each and every day. And I admit, I don't, I don't do as much of it as I should do. And I, I ask the Lord to forgive me for that. Ask the, I ask the Lord to work on me. Work Amen. on me, Lord. Every I, day. I know. And I, he is. We got to remember, he is working on us. That's why we continue to ask. But if you don't ask, he won't do it. Because you ain't asked. He said, ask and, and you shall, shall receive. receive. Ask and you shall receive. Amen. And so I, that's why I sort of asked them to work on my weak point. Mm -hmm. Because we get into church and we think because we go to church every Sabbath, every Sunday, whatever day you go on, and we pay our tithes, we think we got it going on. But we got so many. He said it's the little things that do what? So easily be sent us. Thank you. Those little those things, little weights. those little weights mm -hmm. that we never pray about because mm -hmm. we never think about because they're so small. What? So I ask Lord to work on those things there to help me where I'm weak. That's right. We're going to read uh, Galatians 6, 9. We're going to verse 9. All right. And let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint and acting nobly and doing right. For in due time, and at the appointed season, we shall reap if we do not lose and relax our courage and faint. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so stay courageous, stay in the word, become heavenly minded, but don't be so heavenly minded that you forget to be earthly minded. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that before. <laughs> Some people are so heavenly minded. They forget to be earthly minded because you gotta, you gotta be able to do it in the right manner. That's right. And it's only through Christ Jesus that you're able to be here on earth and still be heavenly minded. Yeah, because number ten explained that to you. So then, as occasion, opportunity open up to us, let us do good morally to all people not only being useful or profitable to them, but also doing what is for their spiritual good and advantage. Be mindful to be a blessing, especially to those of the household of faith, those who belong to God's family with you, the believers. Now, see, that's why you can't become heavy-minded. Because yeah, when you yeah. become heavy minded, mm -hmm. you forget about doing that. You forget about you, you forget being, about yep. you you forget about doing good to all mankind. All mankind. Special those who are of the family of uh, faith. But then the faith of yep, the You believers. forget about that. And he's saying do good to all people. Yes. Yes, so that's especially, right. especially the family of faith. That's right, those who are believers like you. Yeah, those that are believers like you. And when you become high-minded, you forget about that. That's mm. why you got to keep it on a low profile. That's right. See, Amen. that's what God is telling us. Amen to that. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's right. Also, we are being weighed in the balance. God is weighing our character, our conduct, and our motives in the balance of the sanctuary. It will be a fearful thing to be pronounced wanting in love and obedience by our Redeemer, who died upon the cross to draw our hearts unto him. God has bestowed upon us great and precious gifts. He has given us light and knowledge of his will so that we need not err or walk in darkness. <sighs> So he is weighing our character, our conduct, and even our motives in the sanctuary. That's why we got to see what kind of man. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. That's right. We he got, is our example. That's why you got to stay with a level mind. You got to stay 
here on the earth for God to walk on. Bound. You gotta bound. be bound. bound. You gotta be bound. bound. Out. If you don't, you'll find yourself and looking, wanting. looking right. down your nose mm. at people. That's not God. But you don't have no, that means you won't, you don't have the character of Christ. You don't have the character of Christ. And God don't know you when you're like that. You need to pray yes, and say, Lord, help me. And pray for each other. If you right. have a brother or sister in the church who is like that, pray for them. Pray for them. Pray Because for them. I want you to pray for me. That's right. Pray for me. Obstacles make us strong. It is the obstacles that make men strong. It is not helps, but difficulties, conflicts, rebuff that make men a moral sinew. Too much ease and avoiding responsibility have made weaklings and dwarfs of those who ought to be responsible men of moral power and strong spiritual muscle. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we have to have these trials to buff us, to keep us strong. We got to have the conflict and the difficulty. If you notice, the more ease and relaxation we have, we become stagnant. What did he tell Paul? Paul said, ask them to remove that thorn. Mm. What did he tell Paul? He yeah. told him, he, that thorn is there to buff you, is to remind, remind you. Paul. you. Paul. When you go back to where you were or had that like memory mm -hmm. or think about it, this thorn it, is... It there. keeps you in humility. There it keeps you, you so connected to Christ. It keeps you connected to me, Paul, so you'll remember where you used to be. You don't want, you don't to, want go to go back, back to. There. That's correct. Okay. You know, sometimes we have uh, weaknesses and things, and every one of us do. And we have to think about, Lord, I thank you because you know what? That is also what keeps me, oh, I realize, I bet not. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> how, how many of us want to pray for a thorn in our side? To be removed. To be removed, to be put there, let's not remove, to remind us to not to want to go back to where we come from. That's right. I don't Lord, want to go back put to a thorn in my side to keep me from going back to where I used to be so I can keep looking at you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Keep Amen. looking at you, Lord. Keep looking to Jesus Christ, which is our example. You got to remember, trials are God's way to remove impurities, infirmities, and roughness from us. Wow. Because he loves us. He, he loves us so that he would rather see us suffer with a thorn in our side, in mm -hmm. our ear, in whatever, whatever, to keep us looking up at him and our soul will be saved. Then just let us go and do whatever we want to do. Right. It you fits know, us for, that's correct, it fits us for the society of pure heavenly angels in glory. But as we pass through these trials, as the fires of affliction kindle upon us, we must not keep the eye on the fire, which is seen, but let the eye of faith fasten upon the things unseen, the eternal inheritance, the immortal life, the eternal weight of glory. And while we do this, the fire will not consume us, but only remove the dross, and we shall come forth seven times purified, bearing the press of the divine. Amen. Amen. And you know, Amen. trials and tribulations, it's hard, but we got to remember that in those trials and tribulations, we need to be praying. And some of them are, some of them are very hot. And if you haven't experienced it, keep living. Well, <laughs> we need to be praying because we know when Jesus is finished, oh, we're oh, come what happened? For seven times purified. Oh, we'll be even better than we were when we were yeah. starting to do that. Amen. Amen. I know that through the trials and tribulations in our lives, we have more humility, more love, kindness, 
for everybody. We struggle, I'm not saying that we're perfect. Even things that happen that upsets us and does other people, but we continue to put our trust and stay connected to the vine, which is Jesus Christ. Yes, God gets you ready for the trial. You think God is putting you through trials. Mm. God is getting you prepared for the trials that the enemy will put you through. That's right. Amen. So you can make it to heaven. Because the trials that the enemy has mm. put you through, you may not make it through those. But when God prepares you for those, oh, you can walk right through them with no problem like at all. Like he said, he won't let the fire kindle upon you. That's right. That's we got to right. remember that in this life, you're going to have trials and tribulations. You're going to have them with Christ or without or without them. I really have them with, with Christ. Christ. So, amen. <laughs> Bill, we'll be back in a few minutes, 9.34. We're going to take a small break with this song from uh, James Cleveland, God is Love. God is Love. So keep it locked in on LPJ 64 with Mr. and Mrs. Sweet Thing, Bible Study Hour.
Amen. 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 God is our all and all. Is our all and all. God and is. That's right. We are back and you are listening to LPJ 64 with Mr. and Mrs. Steve Thang Bible Study Hour. And we're talking about character development. Yes. Religious experience is gained only through conflict, through disappointment, through severe discipline of self, and through earnest prayer. The steps to heaven must be taken one at a time, and every advanced step gives strength for the next. Yes, you're right. Yes, it does. I notice that every trial and tribulation that we have been going through, each time our faith grows. That's, that, that's how he built uh, your character. You know, you know, people don't, don't like to pray for mm-hmm. their character. Right. Be because to do that, you go through, you go through yes, something. Because you have to, to build character, you have to go through something. Uh, that's you right. Know, that, that's just like being, coming a good boxer. <laughs> Every you, experience. You go through a, a good beating to become a good boxer. Why? You go through a good beating to become anything. And so God has to allow you to go through uh, a lot of uh, ups and downs, ups and disappointments. Downs to disappointments because your character is built. Your character is built to know that God is the only way to overcome okay. your ups and downs. You give, you give us that hope that we need. You give us the strength that we need each time that you're going through. You got to remember, going through a trial and disappointment, it definitely connects you even more so with Christ. And He knows you're sincere at that moment because whether you're going through sickness or somebody else is sick or you lost a loved one, Prayer to Christ really is earnest at that time. It's like an urgency. It builds faith. Yes, it does. Faith is what you need to please Jesus. That's right. It builds faith. It builds faith that I know that God is going to do what he said he's He's going to do. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to leave it alone Mm -hmm. and give it to Jesus and walk out from under it. Because God said it. And I believe it. And I believe it. That's right. You got to stand on his promises. Trials well born develop steadfastness of character. Through conflict, the spiritual life is strengthened. Trials will be born well born, well developed steadfastness of character and precious spiritual grace. The perfect fruit of faith. Meekness and love often matures best amid storm clouds and darkness. That's right. It, de- That's right. it does. It does. And God, God knows that. That's why He allowed us to go through so many of them mm. to build that. Because if, they were, if He did not, we would not make it through the mm. darkness that we're going to have to go through. No, that's true. I can tell that each and every trial. He knows just how long to keep out allowing you to stay in that trial. And he does not put no more on you than what you can bear. We're going to go to Romans chapter 5 and verse 4. And I'm reading the Amplified Version. And endurance, fortitude, develops maturity of character, approved faith, and tried integrity. And character of this sort produces the habit of joyful and confident hope of eternal salvation. Mm. There Perseverance, character, and character, hope. There you go. There it is right there. That's what happens when God allows you to go through your trials. That's your right. Relation. We're going to go to five, verse five and two. Such hope never disappoints or deludes or shame us for God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given 
to us. That's right. Amen. It's all about love. All about love. It's all about love. God is showing them how to build faith and trust in Him. Yeah, Allowing sure. us to go through these uh, trials and tribulations. As they build in the trust, the faith that we need. Yeah, that's what we need. Yeah, that we need. God orders our surroundings. And he will place us where we shall have test after test to prove us and to re reveal what is in our hearts. Mm. Mm. So these tests is to reveal what's sitting in our hearts. Oh, why you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. Because we think we're good to go. We think we Perfect. I'm okay. We think we're perfect. We'll walk to the mirror, look in the mirror, and say, mm, you know, I'm a pretty cool old guy. I ain't half as bad as people think I am. But God knows deep down in you what needs to be dug out, poured out, washed out, and cleaned out. And he know exactly what kind of test to give us to show us. <laughs> he know just what he know just what to put in your life to bring those things out of you. Well, just like you, sometimes you think, oh, I ain't got no problem with that. I, I've already forgiven that person, but then God allow that individual back, and He shows you in your heart, no, you didn't. Right. Wow. You push that person right back in your life, and you haven't forgiven that person and you think you have, God shows you that you haven't. That you haven't got the victory over that. You haven't got the victory over that. You know, a lot of times we have people that feel like it's our enemy and they come in our lives over and over and over and you're going, what in the world? Why does that keep happening? When you have passed the test, that enemy will not be your enemy anymore. And you won't even see that individual. And if you do, you'll be happy. To you'll see. be happy to see him. You'll be oh, glad that's to right. you'll greet that person with love. That's right. And now you have won that battle. Satan no, won. Satan no longer have authority over you in that battle anymore. Thank the Lord for that. Because I know see? that when you have done something to somebody or they have done something to you, and every time we look around, there's that individual. And you go, you know, I don't care where I go, he or she is there. But it's because you have to do something to get it right. You have to forgive. You have to stop being angry and say, Lord, I give it to you. I surrender. See, you have to forgive because when you forgive, you're not angry anymore. Right? Forgiveness is to free you. Not the other Not person. The other it's to free you. God wants you to be free from Satan's uh, uh, jailhouse. That's right. And you can be free. Break from, those chains. Break those chains. God wants you to be free from his jailhouse. He knows that you need to forgive so you can be set free. So he keep putting that particular thing in your life. No until, <laughs> until you forgive so you can be set free. And you think you already done it all. Oh, I'm cool. I forgave them. No, you haven't. Mm -hmm. And God knows you haven't. That's right. God knows you haven't. No. Or, or, or he keep putting you in that person's life so that person can ask you for forgiveness. That's right. God has a way of doing things. Oh, he and does. It's so beautiful the way he mm -hmm. does it. And we get upset. It don't seem like it at the time. And one question you need to ask, Lord, well, why? What are you trying to show me in this? Oh, he didn't let you know. <laughs> yeah. So, Lord, show me what are you wanting me to do, or what needs to be done. What should I do? What is the purpose of this, Lord? This keep happening over and over. Show me, Lord. What is it that you want me to do? do? He will show me. That's right. Every heart will be tested. Every character developed. It is principle. It is principle that God's people must act upon. Hmm. The living principle must be carried out in the life. Principle. Hmm. Let's look up that word principle. 
you know, I, you know, you know what it means, but I, I like for it to be even deeper. You know what I mean? Sometimes you know what it is, but sometimes you need to get a little bit deeper in what it is. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's what, my that's, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> where I like. Yeah, that's where I like. That's it. it. Yeah. You said that right. Get a little deeper in what it means. I am looking it up now. But God is real to us, and He's good because He loves us. That's it. He always set a, a way that we can love ourselves and love our enemy and love Him. He always got the big old circle of love. Yes, He does. Like He said, that uh, it is principle that God's people must act upon. Principle is a fundamental truth or proposition that serves as the foundation for a system of belief or behavior. It is behavior that God's people must act upon. Yes. It's a behavior because the way you behave is the way people know that you are God's child. That's right. Because the life you live, the way you act, the way you conduct yourself. Like he said, it, it, it's principle, a rule or a code that God people must act upon. Right. Habitual, our, our right principles, um, the laws. And that's what we got to understand. It is God's principle. It is his law that God people must act upon. Like he said, the Ten Commandments, that's his law. Right. Hmm. Right. That's right. Right. This is, this is what he love, said. Love your neighbor. Right, love your neighbor, you love yourself. You know, do unto others you wish to be do unto you. Many yeah. times his way of dealing is so contrary to our plan and expectations that we are amazed and com confounded. I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's right. <laughs> Lord, I'm like, Lord, why I gotta go through that? So we do not understand our perverse natures. And often, when we are gratifying self or following our own inclination, we find ourselves that we are carrying out the mind of God. Some seek to control their surroundings, thinking that if they are placed in favorable position, the bad traits in their character will not be developed. But God orders our surroundings, and he will place us where we should have test after test to prove us and to reveal what is in our hearts. That's true. Uh, otherwise, why would you I know it's there? Mm, I wouldn't know it. I mean, there. because, I mean, you, you, could, you and I, like, you, you know, we get that old prayer thing on, you know, hey, you know, I'm all good, you know, I, I ain't like that, you know, I'm, I'm a good person, I'm a giving person, I'm a kind person. So you get that self pride, mm. and you don't see yourself as God see you. See, no, you, you think you are all good, you good person. God has to put you where you can see who you really are. You see, and that is true because we are too quick to be discouraged. That's and not, we're always crying for the trial to be removed from us. But we should be pleading for patience to endure and grace to overcome. That, that's what I'm saying. Oh, we should be praying for that. Wow. Uh, let me be able to endure this thing. Uh, let wow. me be able to see what you're trying to show me and teach me in this. So give me you patience, know. Lord, to endure what's happening now and give me grace to overcome it. That's right. That's right. So the more you talk faith, the more faith you will have. The more you talk faith, the more faith you will have. The more you do well upon discouragement, talking to others about your trials and enlarging upon them to enlist the sympathy which you crave, the more discouragements and trials you will have. Why mourn over that which you cannot avoid? Ooh. What we do. What we do. See, that's why mm -hmm. we should we should thank God 
for the child. Because they're coming. They're coming. coming. They're coming and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, just like we're getting older. As we get older, what happens? Oh, you know, people cry, I don't want to get old. Well, you ain't got no, if you want to live, you're going to get old. <laughs> well, surely you live, surely, surely you're going to get old. That's right. There's nothing you're going to do about it. You're going to you die. You can't avoid it. You're going to die. There's nothing you can do about nothing that. Do about so it. why cry about it? Go ahead and live until you die. And thank God for every That's moment, right. every second of it. Why sit around and moan and groan, dye your hair, paint your lips, trying to look young, <laughs> and fool yourself that you're not getting old. Oh, Enjoy. Enjoy the beauty of being older. Grandmother, beautiful silver hair, the blessings that come with that. We waste so much time, time trying to stop something right. that we do enjoying it. That's right. That's why he tells us not to do well upon discouragement. We need to talk about faith. And that's the more we talk about it, the more faith we want to have. And he have. told us that. He that's said right. we should rise above slights and rebuffs. And annoying. Yeah, because the more you talk about getting old, the mm. more stressful you get and the older you look. The older you look. You know what? That is the truth. Hey, think about it. That's what God tells us. You go look in the mirror, oh my goodness, there's a wrinkle. Oh, yeah. there's my skin. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So when you go, you know, Lord, thank you for the silver. Thank you for the beauty of being a grandmother or being older. That's Praise right. God. Your brain feeling not to give it thought. <laughs> what you should eat a drink. Right, right. <laughs> because you'll stress out. You'll get old just by stressing out. That's right. What about, boy, I got a year older this year. So, oh, you know? In other words, why I'm worried about something you can't control? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thank, I thank God that uh, I just enjoy every day and I don't worry yeah. about I'll be hitting seven old this year. I don't care. Mm, I ain't worried about that. God if I see, see seven old, I thank the Lord for it. I don't worry about getting old. I just worry about enjoying that seven old. And giving to the kingdom. And giving it to the king. And you gotta remember, we should rise above the slice. Blessed are the meek. The difficulties we have to encounter may be very much lessened by that meekness which hides itself in Christ. That is. Read that again. We can say it. We can say it. The difficulties we have to encounter may be very much lessened by that meekness which hides itself in Christ. So if we possess the humility of our Master, which is Jesus Christ, we shall rise above the slice, the rebuffs, the annoyance to which we are daily exposed, and they will cease to cast a gloom over the spirit. There you go. Praise there God you. for those trials there and tribulations. And you like you said, give us patience to endure and give us grace to overcome it. Now, that's what I ask for. Don't worry about getting old, just give me grace to overcome. That's right. So we just want to thank you, thank you for listening and enjoying this time of Bible study, talking about character development. We definitely going to have a part two. So we want you to continue to listen in. We'll come back with closing prayer and our email address. So keep it locked in on LPJ64 with Mr. and Mrs. Smeetime. <laughs> Some of that they're wondering about your situation. You don't know what to do.
Lord. Thank you for joining us tonight right here on LPJ 64 with Mr. and Mrs. Sweet Thing Bible Study Hour. We just want to give some more comments. It has really been a blessing. We know the character building is born through trials and tribulation right. in our lives. If you don't go through no trials, then you don't have, get no character built. That's right. God loves building character. And it strengthens us for the next one. So he will allow you to go through trials. Don't give up. Just pray. And just pray and ask the Lord to give you that endurance to endure. That patience to endure and the grace to overcome it. So yeah. I want, if you have any uh, prayer or any Bible questions, you can email us at robtgina50 at gmail.com. So, I just let us know that you are listening. If you're not doing anything but that, drop us a line let us know that you do tune in and join us with the Bible study. Just let us know that much if no more. That's right. Now we're going to bow our heads for prayer. My Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us this time to study your word, to be a witness to you. Help us, Lord, each and every day to endure. Give us the patience to endure and the grace to overcome our trials and tribulations that we go through each and every day. Lord, we ask that you bless those that hear what we are speaking about through your word. And give them that strength. Help them to overcome and get the victory over the sins in their lives as well. We ask you tonight, Lord, to forgive us when we complain when we go through trials and tribulations. Forgive us of anything we said, done, or thought that was unpleasing in your sight. So once again, Lord, we ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit. Continue to lead us guide us, direct our path, give us wisdom, knowledge, to understand your word and to do your will each and every day. As we give you all the praise and the honor and the glory, we continue to lift up those that are mourning and have lost loved ones. Give them the strength, give them the patience that they need to endure and the grace to overcome it. And so, Lord, once again, we ask you to encamp your angel around us as we rest tonight, in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. And may the windows of heaven open and pour upon you a bundle of blessings. And don't forget, come back Wednesday from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. right here on LPJ 64 with Mr. and Mrs. Sweetland. Good night. And good night.